Okay, so we gotta talk about stuff, right? Yeah, let's talk about some uh, some stuff. Yeah. So, uh, wait. How did? Okay, we gotta figure out how this whole movie thing started. Oh, this whole movie okay. thing started. Because you started out. Okay, well, you still are. <laughs> uh, you're one of our premier burlesque girls in Vancouver, and for some reason, Vancouver has so many. Don't we? we yeah, do we? I think we just put something in the water. Like other places, they put fluoride in there. We just put like hot, talented. Why brainy. is that? Why do we? Why do we have all these hot chicks here? Um. Well, I'm not going to complain, but I've <laughs> I've noticed that Vancouver like tends to like. There's all these really attractive girls, but it's more than they're just attractive. They're smart and they're talented. Like I th- can think of the number of women I know who have like their own businesses, who are gorgeous. Who are also artistic. I'm just like, holy fuck! Like, how how do women survive in other cities? Like, they must come here and they're like, never mind. Like, full of talented people. Like, you got to sink or swim when you come to Van- Vancouver. Well, that's because uh, remember, I had to import a Vancouver girl down to L.A. Do you hear that, L.A.? <laughs> they're importing us now. <laughs> yeah, because remember, I was I was down there, and American girls, you know, you'd tell a joke, and then they'd look at you with that kind of empty look in their faces and it just flew right over their heads see most of us in vancouver are pretty big so you tell us to tell us a joke we'll laugh yeah you get to go on like all these nerd things like uh fan what are they like conventions oh get, yes wow so uh, like you represent all these different characters uh, to the nerds right well, I just think I, I, I thought I thought about cosplaying myself for a few of these conventions, well, and I'm like, is that just being lazy? Because I already have the costume, and how much effort do I have to put be put in if I'm dressing up like Beatrice? I'm like, eh. I already so have the dress. is Beatrice the uh, for the nerds? Like, is she like uh, a bit like one of the big ones like that? They, um, I or think, is there another character that? Like, well, Mary gets cosplayed quite a lot because her costume is like leather apron, white. And it's a lot of girls are like, you know, I can wear this cosplay, it's fairly easy to put together, and everyone knows I fucking mean business. It's like a dude putting on a Michael Myers mask and a boiler suit, you know, like, it's not vacuum sealed on, you don't have to spend six months working out to look good in your costume, you know, you can just kind of do it and feel confident in it. And if anybody lips you off, you can just kind of look at them and think of what they look like as a human torso. Wow. You mean Mike Myers from Saturday Night Live, that guy? I meant more Michael Myers. But oh. Do we still claim his as Canadian, or did the Americans just like were like, nah, he's ours? I don't know. I think he's an American now because okay. he's been there for so long. Right, and, and Justin Bieber, we didn't get stuck with him, right? Well, the, he's still, the state he, he's been contained in the U.S. He's, he's not st- snuck over the border or anything. He uh, he lives in L.A. now too, which is makes sense. See, people are like, so why don't you move to L.A.? I'm like, Justin Bieber's there. It just wouldn't work. There why would, don't would, you move to L.A.? Oh, God, you have to have a car there. It's oh, terrible. If you do. I, I, we're, I'm a child of, like, the Gibsonian era, oh, right? No. Like, I get around by mass transit, occasionally a taxi when need be, but this whole idea that you're constantly sitting in traffic, <laughs> like, you have to actually plan your life around the traffic to the point that everyone just adds two hours onto their day anyway because you know there will always be traffic. Can you it's drive? a shitty way to live. I, drive, I drove for a long time. Um, I used to go to school in Fort Langley and live in Tawasson. Oh, wow. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I drove, but whole, I don't like driving anymore if I don't have to. The whole time I lived in L.A., I didn't drive. I hate you. <laughs> yeah, and I did like eight years there. But you should move down, I think. Oh, I think that's a terrible idea. Well, okay, you've been booking all these movies... Like, okay, oh, I want to talk about the House of Manson. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about House of Manson. Yeah, okay, so what, what's up with the House of Manson? Because that guy, uh, that guy was pretty cool, right? Ryan Kaiser, yep, uh, the guy who Oh, I was played... talking about Charles Manson. Oh, Charles Manson, well, <laughs> yeah, he's, he very thoughtfully did a number of things which helped us promote the I film. mean, what's he doing, it's still doing in jail. He didn't kill nobody. Yeah, well, he kind of really made a bunch of highly suggestible people think that that was a shit hot idea. Oh. It was Thanks. it was interesting watching the movie because uh, I, there's a lot of information. Which one did you play? I played Abigail Folger. I played. Oh, uh, did she get killed? She did. Oh. Spoiler alert! Oh, me shit. and Sharon Tate die. It's terrible. <laughs> Sharon Tate was hot. The sad thing was the actress who was playing Sharon Tate in the film, Susie Lorraine. She was actually eight months pregnant, which was the exact length of time Ooh. along that uh, Sharon Tate was when she was murdered. And at that point, I had a friend, uh, Cherry on Top, who was that far along as well. And I just remember when we were shooting the, that part, I was just like, 
Oh my god, if anybody ever did the study of my friends, I would kill them! 60s, man. 60s changed it all. I was just a kid trying to find my way. I learned that whatever you put out, you get back. Mankind is what brought the war. Mankind is what brought Helter Skelter. You still talk to your family? This is my family, yeah. There's one thing that I think this world needs more of. It's tenderness. You're that Charlie was telling me about, right? Came down from San Francisco with a pussy wagon full of hippie chicks, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm that Charlie. She don't know. He's out of control. You are aware that you're being held on charges of conspiracy in the murders of Gary Hinman, Sharon Tate, and Rose Marion Leno LaBianca. What does he mean? Do something witchy. The sooner it starts, the sooner we get our salvation. People are dead, Charlie. They're dead because you sent people to their house to take their lives. And why? Because you're not a rock star. Always is always forever. And House of Manson, was that like, that's an American film, right? It is, yes. And is that's playing now? or It's playing festivals now. So if it's screening at a festival at, in a city that you're at, you should probably go check it out because it would definitely be worth your while. Has it come through Vancouver? It played here once very briefly as part of a film festival back in April, but it has not yet since played again, although it might play the Rio Grind Fest or the Badass Film Festival oh or one of the God. other multiple genre film festivals that we host in the city. So your films are, they're like grind? Oh yeah, I'm queen of the bump and grind house. <laughs> it's grind house. It is grind house a lot it of it, yeah. It is, isn't it? You're just looking at Frankenstein created bikers, aren't you? I'm excited about that. <laughs> you should be. It's fucking great. Yeah, because I'm actually a big fan of the genre of biker films. Oh, I, wonderful. I actually quite like, uh, I miss biker films. You know, they don't make you, biker films anymore. They don't. They don't because uh, 35 millimeter film is hard to find, and it's also it's a little. They, they, insurance on set is expensive, and back in the 70s, we'd be like, yeah, we're just gonna like ride the motorcycle around and film it. Yes. Yeah. What if it actually kicks off a resurgence? That would be great. I can ride a motorcycle, so I'll have work. Well, <laughs> you could get a motorcycle, live in LA. Start a little gang. Okay, now I gotta ask, what <laughs> what is with the trying to sell me on LA? Well, thing? I just think your career will. Uh, okay, when I lived in LA, it was like every morning I'd wake up and there'd be this new opportunity. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, we need this, we need that. You know, yeah, I it would be uh, Jewish people always giving me money. That's it great. Like, that was always good. Yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, and then I moved back here, and it's a little, little bit more of a hustle, a bit more of a grind. Yeah, right there's uh, there's like no work for you know rock stars <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if, you're rock, if you're a rock star you gotta go to LA kids Here's, there's your tip it's a specialist uh, it is, field that a, I'm in it's a niche it's a niche it's a niche market but I mean as an actress uh, yeah I, like uh, I'd find you're, you'd find like uh, you know the work you get more work it's like it's easier for them to hire people who are there who are immediately close that's true yeah, I, um I think my opinion on that is just that because I have been getting the work I've been getting, um, you know, I'm happy to pay the the raised rate of what the uh, cost of living is in Vancouver um, just to be able to live here, uh, not to mention there's a lot of really attractive people in this town and really beautiful natural landscape. But um, I think, too, just in terms of L.A., like, I know there's a lot of different people from different... Um, uh, scenes and stuff there, but honestly, I feel so weird already. Like, even though I do horror and genre, it's kind of ghettoized in a lot of the, uh, like, the, like, other types of film, uh, industry. And being, a mostly horror act genre, and also being a burlesque dancer and being a fetish model and all this other stuff, I think that they probably take one look at me and, like, nope! <laughs> really? They're like, that one's way too weird for us. I actually really wanted to get my tongue split for the longest time, and I've been told by a few people, it's like, well, if you get your tongue split, it's really going to limit your working opportunities in in, um, in film. So my goal is to get to a point where I'm in demand enough 
no matter what, that like I can, you can live. Get your tongue split. I can live anywhere in the world, and I can get my tongue split. And it's just like, yeah. So Angelina, Angelina Jolie has a couple of tattoos. So Megan Fox has a few tattoos. We'll just cover that. So Tristan Risk has a fucking split tongue. We'll just shoot around it. What? Frankenstein. So yes. okay. So how? Okay. How do we work Frankenstein into this whole biker scenario? Is he like the leader of the bi- uh, bikers? Well, no. What, what is uh, what's happened is the Frankenstein character is left over from the um, the film prior to this called Dear God No, and uh, he has he enlists the, the help of the bikers to ha- to do some some dirty work for him. So he basically, if you've seen Dear God No, you know that the bikers do not necessarily make it out. All well, Dear alive. God No was a biker film too. It was. Uh. Another good biker film from back in the day, I don't know if you've seen this, was uh, Switchblade Sisters and Miniskirt Mob. I mean, those are like more like the chick. Was that um, like the 60s? Yeah, or? yeah. Wow. You know, the Miniskirt Mob. Wow. So, okay, so in uh, Frankenstein Created Bikers, you play Val, mm-hmm. who's on a revenge trip, man. She is. She's, uh, she's out to settle a few scores, and a lot of shit gets blown up in between her appearance on on film and to the part where she is no longer in the film. Right. So what did these bikers do to her that got her so upset in the well, first place? Can we say? Uh, she's, you know, she's put up with their shit for a long time and she's just finally had enough like most women. She's probably really nice before all this shit went down and then she just snapped and became a, an uber bitch. And she was in jail or something? Yeah, you know. Actually, I think that... Uh, Jimmy has an, another movie he's working on that's a prequel with uh, with with a lot of women in jail. Possibly. Oh, women in jail film. Yeah, let's go to like like I'm like that would be a great transition to go from biker <laughs> movie to women in jail films. I feel. Have you done done any women in jail films? Not yet, but here's hoping that I do. Do you think that'll come back? Oh God, I hope so because there's so much fun to be had with those. I really feel like people are starting to explore not just like the grindhouse uh, genre, but like all the subgenres within that one genre back in the day. In America, uh, there are are a lot of people who are in jail, so that is a big demographic. Do you think jail films will appeal to those people? You know, I. <laughs> or is that a I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm after. like, would I watch a movie about burlesque that didn't have Christina Aguilera and Sharon? It probably. Um, but yeah, no, I do, like I, I don't know. Usually, it's like films are supposed to be an escape from something, right? So it's just like <laughs> I think that'd be kind of just like oh. that'd be fucking with. Well, you know, I guess if you really wanted to fuck with people in jail, you could show them Human Centipede Three. There is. Oh, I like that film. Or no, I like, like the a, first there's Human a, Centipede. I didn't like the last one. The number two. There was one that was just really. Uh, it got real art house. The one with the. Um, it got too uh, too just gratuitous violent. I like the uh, human centipede movie got too gratuitous <laughs> well, I and thought violent. The, I thought the first one that one that one was like I had black humor and it was hot and sexy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to let everyone just ponder that for a minute. Mark Godfrey just described the human centipede at first sequence as hot and sexy. But uh, then after, it kind of lost that. He's on Tinder, ladies! (laughs) (laughs) Ah, shit! Ah, What are you doing in there? I'm here every night. Floor? Did we talk about that? No, that was the one that shot in Ireland. Ireland! Ireland! In Limerick! Let me guess, the guy who shot it was named Paddy Murphy or it, something. His name was named Paddy Murphy! When I got no, the that's email... that's a made-up Irish name, I just No, it's out. not. It's not made up. It's, it's no, actually... I was trying to make up a stereotypical You're stereotypical. Irish name. You didn't have to. He already Paddy Murphy! Him. His mom just looked at him and go, Oh, just call him Paddy. It's good <laughs> enough. Oh, you mean there really is a person named Patty? Yeah, Murphy? there's actually Pat. Yeah, he's like the, oh. the Irish Kevin Smith. It's hilarious. Oh shit! Yeah, he's hopefully he doesn't listen to this. <laughs> Patty, he's, I I totally told him that you're real. He doesn't believe me that you're a person. <laughs> is he a bare knuckle boxer? No, he is not. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so what's the deal with Patty Murphy's film? Patty Murphy's film Ground Floor is the third in a trilogy of short films called the Psychosis Trilogy. So I play a lady who gets in the, the elevator with uh, the devil who forces her to kind of acknowledge a lot of the shitty things she's done that you don't really think about how many shitty things we do as people in a day until you're kind of like someone's 
throwing it all in your face. Um, so like a good Irishman, he worked in some Catholicism. A little, little bit of Catholic guilt there. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I play opposite uh, Steve Spade, who is a very well-known, respected magician in Ireland. Wow. Yeah. So uh, Steve was able to help us pass the time because every time I was bored, I was like, I would like to see a card trick. Please. Thank you. Now another one. And another one. Oh. But the guys were really fun to work with. Wow. And when did you go over there? That I went over in December. Oh, so it was shitty. Well, it was... It, you know, I'm, being from Vancouver, I'm used to cold and damp and it was December which is pretty much synonymous with cold and damp and it wasn't cold and snowy which is where it was everywhere else in the world it felt like except for Limerick, Ireland and, and well, Vancouver yeah. this winter. It's God's country over there isn't it? <laughs> oh it's I actually went to uh, the mouth of hell which is uh, a river flows out of it that goes past Limerick and I was like I just want to see where the mouth of hell is and also Possibly see if I can get demonically possessed, which did not happen to my knowledge. You didn't get naked at the mouth of hell and uh, start a curse or anything, did no, you? No, I didn't. I kept my pants on. <laughs> I know, it's boring. But that must have been great to get... You, they just shipped you over there. To yeah, they just shipped me over there said, like, okay, now just uh, let Steve menace you for a few days. I got to, uh, I got to experience a lot of cool things in Limerick and... Uh, I also enjoyed um, being in a car full of Irish guys Drunk. in December, driving around Limerick Island, and the fucking fairy tale of New York comes on the air. I'm like, I couldn't have planned this better if I fucking tried. I don't like Wikipedia. I prefer to read a whole book. You know, before. except except about the stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there isn't a Tristan Risk book yet. Not yet. When it comes out, it'll be called How to Drink Fucking Do Drugs. But there is a Tristan Risk book, isn't there? Aren't you in uh, some burlesque book? I am photographed. I am. Um, I am part of the burlesque coffee table book that's coming out and there's another lady from Vancouver Melody Mangler we're both repping ah. the west coast Van City on that one which is pretty cool but it's also got some uh, very notable people appearing at it like uh, Dita Von Tees yeah, and Roxy it's got Delight the, uh, the whole uh, whole genre scene yeah I'm pretty impressed I was just like wow you've got all these talented people what the fuck am I doing in this book well that, well, that means they, they rate you wow they, they must rate not, you they've, ne they've, never, they've never seen me in, in my in my trashy human form which is just as well so it, with the whole burlesque thing uh, you've you've like uh, gone down to Vegas and uh, you know you've flown around and done big things haven't you to quote Fritz the cat I've seen things and I've done things <laughs> <laughs> yeah I've, uh, I've moved around a lot I've performed in 12 different countries both uh, in North America and over in Europe a lot <clears throat> Do you ever get, like, uh, your nerd fans sending you weird stuff in the mail? Because, like, uh, I get Vampire Bats fans always sending me panties. But they always get my size wrong. Hmm. So, yeah, you don't actually look like Beatrice. No, no. Um, a lot of people ask the sauce because if they found someone who had had, like, the 14 surgeries to resemble Betty Boop, which um, I have not had... Um, however, Paula, who played um, Ruby Real Girl, Paula Lindbergh, she had um, also prosthetic makeup that was applied to her as well, but it was to look more like a conventional kind of beauty standard. In fact, she wound up looking quite a bit like Amanda Lepore, in my opinion, which hey. I thought was awesome. Oh, okay. But a lot of people thought that she had had the actual surgery done, too, and they're like, you know, she's kind of pretty in a strange way. And they're like, yeah, you should see her without her makeup on. She's really gorgeous. Okay. There you go. You're a girl who makes sense. I am. I'm sensible and I'm hilarious. There you go. Tristan Risk. Woohoo!